Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Since we're in the holiday season in December, I'm about to review Jingle All the Way, which I just recently picked this up during Black Friday last week on Blu ray. And I mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again. It stars Arnold Schwarzenegger playing a workaholic magic salesman who just never had time to spend with his wife and his son, both played by Rita Wilson, Tom Hanks' wife, and Jake Lloyd, before he went on to do Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace as Anakin Skywalker. Anyway, um, to make it up for it, and he soon realized that he forgot, he decided to race uh, against time during Christmas Eve to grab the Turbo Man action figure, but chaos started to run around. He joins in on and off with um, Sinbad playing a mail carrier. I mean, we learned that he actually has a family, so he wants to race for the Dell. Also, he has a next door neighbor who is often go around, you know, having required feelings for his wife. He's always been spending time with her, you know, when he's not around. Anyway, yeah, and this contains both the theatrical version and the extended director's cut. Yeah, Brian Levant uh, directed this. Um, but it was actually uh, written by Chris Columbus, who was given an uncredited uh, role because they join in with writer Randy Cornfield to provide the script. Uh, Chris Columbus uh, is the executive producer for the film. So, this makes it up for the fact that this is indeed a wacky, goofy uh, Christmas comedy, but it does have, as some people would say, it has an uneven tone, in a way. Um, but hey, it's always fun to see Arnold Schwarzenegger appearing in comedies, you know, ever since uh, Twins with Danny DeVito, along with Kindergarten Cop, yeah, both of which were directed by Ivan Reitman. And not to mention uh, Junior, also with Danny DeVito, and of course Reitman. So this was his uh, fourth time that he got to do something. And I thought this was really interesting too. And I remember seeing the, the teaser trailer a long time ago when I went to see all these movies uh, in 96. And I thought that was really clever because seeing that he usually does all these action movies... You know, I thought it was really cool that he actually gets to uh, once up inside uh, one of those uh, basements and then he's just take, taking out the list to see what he's going to get for his son. <laughs> and that is, of course, the Turbo Man action figure. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, of course, Sinbad just takes it. <laughs> And that's where he's about to race against it. If you saw the teaser trailer, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and there's, of course, the theatrical trailer that tells it all. And yes, it only has uh, just a few features, which is the making of a hero, Super Kids, and Turbo Man Behind the Mask. Yeah, it's a take on the <laughs> one of those uh, VH1 or MTV uh, types of... Um, I just read it, VH1. You know, types of interviews where they begin to find out what happened to Turbo Man because they had a TV series that they mentioned. So that's a pretty nice featurette. Um, unfortunately, there's no trailers nor TV spots. I wish they included them on this Blu-ray. They should have had, though. It seems like you can find it online if you have to, unless it's on the original DVD. So, and yes, there's a digital code included, but I already used it. That's another thing too about that. You know, I, I noticed that when, when I'm on Facebook, they're about to ask me for a digital code that I had when I bought those Blu-rays. And I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I can't do that. You know, I'm not like one of those people who loves to send out the digital codes to everyone. Okay, I, I can't do that because that's just wrong. You know, it's incredibly wrong. You know, you got the movie. You own it, so you have to take it. But I guess if people want to share it, just to be generous, then I understand. 
I mean, there are people out there who wants to send out digital codes to actually uh, watch a movie. Um, anyway, but enough of that. Um, but yes, uh, when the movie came out, um, out of its 75 million budget, hard to believe, um, it did pretty well. Um, going up with uh, other holiday films uh, coming up too, like you know they were releasing movies like uh, Space Jam and uh, 101 Dalmatians was also coming out. Yeah, the remake, and so a lot of films were coming out during the holiday season. Um, and I, I guess the idea with this was that uh, when this came out, I mean this was a take on, the, I guess you could say Black Friday. <laughs> Um, before that became such a big thing. But the fact is, this movie was set during Christmas Eve. So yes, uh, this was at the time when when the shoppers were going completely crazy and nuts. I mean, it had a lot of chaos going around. So they're uh, annoying, yeah, knowing to search for the, the Dow or action figure to find, such as the Cabbage Patch Kids, Furby, uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers all come to mind, so this this is inspired um, by real life events. I mean, this happens all the time, and it's not just um, action figures and dolls alone. It it also happens with uh, electronics too. You know, it could be Blu-rays, uh, DVDs, um, even VHS tapes for, at the time for the '90s or '80s, for that matter. Uh, how about um, you know, Blu-ray players, uh, DVD players, or maybe even 4K Ultra HD TVs, uh, 4Ks, HDs. Uh, how about PlayStation uh, Free? You know, that was a uh, more chaotic. Uh, all the PlayStations or the Xbox, Xbox Ones or whatever. I know I'm I'm going over the place on that. You know, people have been rushing to get them for a lower price, and then you know people got trampled or or even uh, almost got killed too. I mean, I heard that people actually got hurt, injured just to get all these gifts. I mean, it's it's dangerous. It really is. So, I guess that was the idea of having to do a film called Jingle All the Way. Yeah. And I guess it also can expire uh, Buzz Lightyear too, because you know that was also another popular doll from Toy Story. <laughs> This, this is a take on that, but of course, Turbo Man is a take on, you know, superheroes, and so of course, when they when they're popular, that's exactly what they're going to go for 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 kids out there. They're going to be they're going to fall for this stuff because they want to have it on their own. They want to be able to play it. They want to have a, a good time for for Christmas. Yeah. Well, let, let's get to the review. It stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sinbad. Bill Hartman, God vs. Soul. I know both Sinbad and Phil Hartman had a free collaboration with films like Coneheads and House Guests, which is an underrated gem, a very funny comedy. Yeah, the spite of the editing they really went for. Jake Lloyd, uh, Robert Conrad, who happened to be in like shows like. Uh, the Wild Wild West, for those who don't know. Uh, Martin Mole. Uh, Jim Belushi. Which, interesting enough, I mean, this is the second time he collaborated with Schwarzenegger since Red Heat. So, what, what are the odds here? <laughs> um, uh, Lorraine Newman. Um, Harvey Corman. Yes. Uh, Harvey Corman, the Soul, the comedian. From the Carol Burnett Show, um, Mama's Family, and which is a spin-off to the Carol Burnett Show, and he also does the voice of um, the Zoo, you know, the alien from the TV series uh, The Flintstones, and yeah, not to mention Star Wars: The Holiday Special. Richard Mole from Night Court, uh, Curtis Armstrong from Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, Booger. And Daniel uh, Roden. Written by Randy Corfield, once again, with Chris Columbus given an uncredited uh, writing credit here. 
And it's directed by Brian Levant, the same man who gave us Beethoven, the Flintstones live action adaptation. And um, he went on to do um, several other films to, to follow. And of course, he did do A Christmas Story 2. Terrible movie. The movie began set somewhere in Minnesota. We meet Howard Lanston, who's played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's a workaholic mattress salesman, you know, goes around, you know, making all these phone calls to customers so they could have all these uh, mattresses to be delivered. And, he, and ends with, you're my number one customer. <laughs> he makes all these phone calls. Yeah, the, meanwhile, his employees are just going around having a Christmas party and everything uh, during that particular uh, month, you know, on Christmas vacation because they're getting ready for it for Christmas Eve and then Christmas, of course. Anyway, he has a wife, uh, Liz, played by Rita Wilson, and his nine year old son, Jamie, played by Jake Lloyd. He loves them so much, but he never spends more time with them due to having to work so hard and he often puts a bad light by his uh, next door neighbor who's a divorcee named Ted Molin who's played by Phil Hartman who's just basically going around flirting or or having some unrequired feelings for for Liz I mean this is exactly what he's dealing with he has a son named Johnny who's played by E.J. De La Pena. Yeah, that's that's another actor I forgot to mention here. Um, so during that day, just when he was trying to wrap up, he was about to make it all the way on time to get to uh, Jamie's uh, graduation for his karate class. But unfortunately, there was a traffic jam that lies ahead, and he was trying to make it on time. Till you got pulled over by a traffic cop, which we're often going to be seen throughout the entire movie, named Officer Alexander Hamel, played by Robert Conrad. So what happened was he got pulled over. Um, he thought that he was drunk, so he had to do all these tests, especially having to, to spell the apple bit backwards. So once he finally made it to the karate class, sadly... Um, Everyone was gone. You know, it was all empty, so he couldn't make it. I mean, yes, Liz, uh, along with um, Ted and everyone else, uh, came by. So, surprisingly enough, Ted did film the whole thing. When Howard finally came back home, he was about to explain to his wife, Liz, and and then Jamie about what just happened. That it wasn't my fault. I I didn't mean this to to not show up on time. So to make it up for him was that, to, yeah, to cheer him up, um, Jamie wanted to have a Christmas wish to actually have him buy a Turbo Man action figure because uh, he always watches a very popular t television superhero all the time that he really wants one so bad. Um, but we learned that Liz actually was having to ask him for the Dell two weeks earlier, but he soon had forgot. So what happened was, on Christmas Eve, Howard decided to set out um, to spend the entire day, you know, because there's going to be a parade coming up too, to actually spend the entire uh, morning trying to find the Turbo Man action figure. But then he realized that every single toy store out there has been sold out completely. All they had was Booster as well as uh, all the other um, action figures uh, from the series. But, um, but during the process, um, he, had a, he develops a rivalry against a mail carrier. It was a postal worker and a father named Mywin Larrabee, who's played by Sinbad, which um, I guess we're going to get to that. Because um, I, I love how his character starts to change here and there. He explains about how he was going through, and then next thing you know, he goes completely nuts. Or sometimes he talks about the idea of this whole thing. They had to go to a local uh, shopping mall, which happens to be the Moral of America in uh, Bloomington, Minnesota. 
Uh, they went to a local toy store. They they had like a sweepstakes, you know, for, for everyone out there who's about to grab the ball that has a number 10 will be able to grab the Turbo Man action figure. But that became so chaotic. I mean, of course, kind of like when when he was trying to go to all these uh, toy stores and everyone got trampled in and everything <laughs> to get it. Um, so he wants up going to grab the ball, but then the little girl suddenly takes it as it went down. Yeah, the ball just bounces, and and then he wants up going straight into a <laughs> a, a local um, in a playground as somewhere in a toy store, Fio Schwartz, I believe. Um, so he had to chase the the little girl around who has the ball, going straight into the play ball and. Until he he got mugged in by all these angry mutters out there calling him a pervert, cause he, yeah, cause the little girl actually put the ball in his mouth and everything. So then, by desperation, um, Howard attempted to buy a figure from a counterfeit toy band, which that's where we meet a mall Santa, who's played by Jim Belushi, who joins in with his little elf, who's played by Danny Woodburn. Yeah, I forgot to mention him. Because he's in the movie. Um, there's there's going to be some cameos in the film too. That I could... Boy, there's like cameos are right. Um, so, he, once he finally made it into the warehouse. Because he had to drive by to see if they have the, the Turbo Man action figure. Because they go around making toys and everything. Uh, that's where you see all these Santas around. And yes, there's like tons of Santas all... All crooks out there, con man. Uh, once uh, the mall Santa actually gave um, Howard uh, the Turbo Man action figure, it turns out that it was very cheap. It was like um, it speaks like multiple languages or so. So he realized that yes, it fell apart. Um, it was totally um, defected. So now um, that's what led to a bigger fight. You know, that's where he's going around yeah, beating the crap out of all of these Santas around. Yes, then you got, uh, which is Big Show from WCW. Yeah, I said Goldberg by mistake. Um, forgive me for saying that when I did my <laughs> video on the Black Friday finds. Uh, what is wrong with me? Hey, I'm human. I'm born to make mistakes. You know, who's the tallest uh, Santa around. And then you also got the tiny Santa. Who happens to be uh, Bern Troyer, yeah, who later went on to play Mini Me in the Austin Powers, the Austin Powers sequels. <laughs> yeah, got Riss Hisso. Um, and I, I thought that was pretty hilarious. And then suddenly he takes uh, just when the cops finally arrived, and and you got Robert Costanzo, um, who's one of the uh, the agents. Uh, uh, Howard actually takes uh, a toy badge, um, actually fooling them, thinking that he's a cop. So he's just going around having all these Sanders around arrested. So yeah, he, he poses as a undercover officer. <laughs> so seeing that uh, he's being completely exhausted at being so completely exhausted at, at his failures around. So, being exhausted at his failure, and out of fuel completely, because he's now stuck in the middle of, of the road here, he goes to a local diner called Mickey's, tries to call home to see, you know, how they're doing. He wants to call uh, Liz to see what's going on. Uh, meanwhile, uh, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that um, this before the whole thing happens. Um... He tries to make a phone call with um, his wife, Liz, but you know, Tanda's already spending time with her, you know, making all these cookies. And yes, this is where he says the line, just when Ted was starting to eat one of um, his cookies. He says, put that cookie down, now! <laughs> yeah, uh, inside the phone booth that says U.S. West, yeah, for those who remember U.S. West. Yeah. Yeah, we had one in, in uh, Oregon, too, when, when I used to be in Oregon. <laughs> okay. Um, 
But yeah, he was trying to make a phone call um, to Liz once again. He wanted to speak to, to her about what's going on. But then Jamie was on the phone because he learned his father because he's not spending time with, with them. And his friend, of course, Johnny, happens to be Ted's son, was just explaining to him that, you know, I, I wish uh, your family had gotten divorced. And I know that's not fair. Howard argued with Jamie because he made a promise that he could keep um, in order for him to get the doubt, but he couldn't. And he got so angry that he says, you know, I'm getting sick and tired of hearing about Turbo Man this and Turbo, Turbo Man that. And, you know, so Jamie yelled at him and got mad and just hangs up the phone. And yes, and Liz just said, screw you, Howard. So, so he lost his patience at, at him. I guess it's, I guess I don't blame him, you know. So now, um, he had to spend time at the diner, you know, feeling very uh, upset and felt pretty bad about what, what he did. So Myron came by, you know, they're about to have a drink, conversation. Was then we saw a flashback where, where it was Jamie, you know, drinking that uh, alcoholic beverage. Um, which I, I thought that was pretty nice where we got to see, you know, Myron making a conversation with Howard, talking about how, how he felt when, when he was a kid. Like he wanted to have a an act, a, a very powerful um, toy gun that actually had like various um, guns that they used that, that changes directly, but he never couldn't get it because his father couldn't afford it. But after long, uh, he, he begins to hear a radio station call saying that... Um, they had to recite the the uh, the names of the reindeers, all Santa's reindeers, in order to get the prize. So he had to rush all the way to a local radio station. I mean, just after he was about to make the phone call at the diner, before Myron had to rip it off and and led to that chase. So he, once he finally made it there, because um, you saw the radio DJ played by Martin Mull. Um, which his name is uh, Mr. Ponytail Man, or KQRS. Um, yeah, he, he he actually have everything memorized, you know, hoping that he'll be able to get the prize, but it turned out to be a gift certificate in order for him to get the Turbo Man action figure. But that's where he got completely furious, and then next thing you know, the cops came by, um, Myron basically took out uh, what's supposed to be a bomb. Well, one of the packages because he often gets sent uh, all these uh, bombs, <laughs> yeah, mail bombs. Uh, well, one was supposed to be, but then it turned out to be a clock. But then next, it turned out to be the next bomb. Yeah, and yes, we do get to see Alexander Hamel showing up again. and Because apparently he's, well, they, they claim that he's a bomb expert but, <laughs> but all this time he didn't think that uh, it was a bomb but actually it turned out to be one <laughs> once um, Howard and Myron escaped because <laughs> they didn't even know it was a bomb <laughs> so it did explode at on uh, Alexander's face and he fainted too so so now it's like, so at that point on, Howard returns home to, to find Ted putting the star on his Christmas tree. And by retaliation, he decided to go straight to Ted's home to actually grab the Turbo Man action figure. That's the present that he was going to give to his son, uh, Johnny. Then he realized that it was wrong, only to be chased down by... A reindeer that Ted brought in, yep, who acts like a dog, but he's just going around attacking Howard, and, you know, he, he caused a little bit of chaos there, too. Like, for example, he burned one of the, uh, one of the, uh, one, one of the figures of, of a, uh, yeah, one of those uh, figures of, of all the Christmas, uh, 
saviors and all, and, and he he was on fire uh, through the fireplace, and he kicks it all the way straight into the window where all the carolers are around. Both Ted and Liz were there, and they were shocked when they found out that yes, uh, Howard did was about to steal the the Asher figure, and telling them it's not what it looks like. And they were about to be off to the Christmas parade. Well, Howard is just, you know, trying to make it up for the reindeer. Yeah, he actually punches him. You know, they're just about to have a drink. And and then, next thing you know, um, he decided, well, he said, well, he wanted to, after what just happened, he figured he'll just go straight to the Christmas parade to make it up for, for Liz and, and Jamie for for what his what he was going through um only to yeah because that's when he begins to spot uh liz and ted you yeah, know jamie and and uh, johnny were about to head off to the parade and and they're about to leave but then ted was starting to make up with starting to flirt with liz and was ready to kiss him you know, about to calm uh, liz down after what just happened by giving her uh, egg dog and then so when Howard just spotted them that's when Liz was about to escape just hits uh, a, a firmals of, of eggnog at him and <laughs> yeah and then he was about she's about to escape and then suddenly Howard was about to all of a sudden got uh, got uh, chosen to to play yeah this is gonna be the biggest one of them all was that he was about to become Turbo Man because uh, the other guy got sick so he got to be taken over and, and then suddenly he meets uh, yes um, the, a chain smoking uh, booster played by Curtis Armstrong and uh, so that's where they're gonna start the parade where that's where you see all these other um, cartoon characters yeah, you even spot Snoopy there too. It's nice to see Snoopy there, but only for a brief second. And there's other um, characters that you're all familiar with, you know. But once Turbo Man finally sh shows up uh, with the float, um, that's where they're about to start the, the adventure begins. When when then suddenly Myron had taken over for um, the mentor. Yeah, someone was dressing up as him. And by the way, the mentor in the TV series was uh, played by Richard Mole. And Turbo Man, of course, was played by Daniel Wooden when they did uh, the TV show, which was at the beginning of the movie. Um, anyway, um, so he took over, so that way he'll be able to grab the, the Turbo Man doll just when he realized that, yes, uh, when, when Howard was dressed up as Turbo Man... He's about to call out who's going to be the winner to actually receive the Dow, and that is Jamie. So he grabs. <laughs> so Jamie finally went up to the float, and he begins to tell him, "How'd you know my name?" Well, he was about to explain until suddenly um, the mentor, yeah, Myron, came by and he was ready to to go after Jamie to steal the Turbo Man Dow. Yeah, and he, he's afraid of heights, so they, yeah, they had to crawl all the way on top of the of the rooftop. And um, of course, um, Howard was you know having some difficult time trying to figure out what to do and how to use all these powers and and all these gadgets that he has. Well, um, he was well, they told him to actually do all that, so he ends up doing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Booster told them to do so, but. Because he's, you know, having trouble with it. I, and I, I know, even the mentor actually punches uh, Booster and then all the kids started to beat the shit. <laughs> started to beat the shit out of him. Um, so Turbo Man was trying to save uh, Jamie from Myron. And then he was trying to suit up the, uh, he was about to try out the, the Turbo Man uh, jetpack. And yeah, that's where he says the line, it's Turbo Time. And then he, then his jetpack was going completely out of control. Yeah, he's having trouble controlling it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see that blue screen effect that you can see uh, 
how we're just trying to, to get the hang out of it. <laughs> um, for a while though, and then because he's going around crashing into a, certain places around even the even a local uh, high-rise apartment building where everyone was about to have their you know, Christmas feast, <laughs> or yeah, which is yeah the Christmas Eve feast, and then every, and then. <laughs> And then when he finally made it uh, to go after uh, Jamie to, to to save him, because now Myron had took uh, the Turbo Man down, and then suddenly he fell all the way down, and then the cops finally uh, arrested him, and then Jamie was about to fall, and then and then uh, Howard finally uh, grabbed him, just like the TV series, you know, and when he was about to save the kid of a uh, of the president. And the president was Harvey Corman, of course. So, uh, so after all the the problems that was going around, I mean, finally, uh, <laughs> Howard reveals himself. You know, seeing that he was dressed as Turbo Man, to to tell him that, you know, it wasn't your fault. You know, it was my fault. I didn't mean to do all this stuff, and but nevertheless, you know. I would make it up for all the mistakes I've done, and this time, it's over. Um, so now Jamie had to give uh, Myron the Turbo Man Dell to make it up for it. Yeah, he was about to be arrested, um, but then he realized that you know why can't I have the Dell when when I have one in my own home? <laughs> so, so that was the end of the movie. Yeah, I know there was a post credit scene, but I I guess we already know that too. Um Yeah, I, I like the movie. I mean, it, it's not um a masterpiece as as many people have made said it though, but it's actually a fun movie um in a way. And it could be a guilty pleasure too. I mean, I I thought um it was it was kind of a good idea to actually take a comedy that's based on real life events that's happening, you know, with a Black Friday chaos and yeah, even the last minute Christmas shopping around that's happening. Um, now I'll say this though, I know it's really tough to actually do comedies like this, and it really is. But I thought Schwarzenegger was a natural to do so, and you know, you could tell he was having fun. He kind of felt bad for him because they kind of made him into a bit of a buffoon. Even though he is a very nice fodder, very likable, but he's just having trouble, you know, having time with his wife and and his son. Um, but that's probably what led to my one of the biggest problems with the film too was that now I don't know I I always. I thought that, um, and I'm sorry to say this though, but I, I thought that Liz was kind of shallow. Just one of those uh, wives that you see in the movies where they're always at to act like, oh great, you know, I'm like um, the smart one, and you know, I, I rather do things. Uh, you know, my 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 husband is a, a goofball and everything, that sort of thing. I'm I'm tired of that. It's it's really it's really annoying. And if that wasn't enough, um, I thought Jamie was a brat. I'm a very spoiled brat, but I I guess I can understand, you know, because he he just never has time to spend with his father. So it's almost like yeah, like you know he's gonna be a loser anyway. <laughs> um, but I, I know I, I was never a big fan of Jake Lloyd. I, I always thought he was not a particularly good actor, and maybe that was one of the problems too. I, I almost felt he was going to ruin the film for me, but then then I realized that you know I do I do feel bad for him too. I mean, in recent years, because you know now he has a mental illness, and you know he got into trouble after you know drag racing. Which I know people made fun of him saying that he was pod racing like he was when he played the young Anakin Skywalker. So. 
Um, but I know. But we'll, we'll get to that. Um, um, but I know it's it, it's hard. It really is. But I think that's probably what broke the film down for me. On the other hand, though, um, what made the movie better for me, though, was that you know you got some great cast to join in. You got Sinbad, who's a very funny comedian. Uh, I love that moment when when he was actually explaining to uh, Howard, though, just before the the toy store was about to open, you know, with only a few minutes before they're being trampled in. I was ready to grab the, the action figure. He was about to explain to Howard that, yes, people do get brainwashed because they, they brought in a subliminal message when, when they watch, um, you know, commercials and all that, or TV shows, and they figured, yeah, it, it causes all, you know, kids out there and parents to go around buying what they've been waiting for, and then they realize that, you know, something bad's going to happen. And, and it happened just before, you know, the whole chaos began. Or even when, um, I, I mentioned it already, but I'll mention it again, was when, you know, Myron was about to explain to Howard about you know, how he was becoming a bad father. And then he was saying about, yeah, well, you know, my, my old man, you know, had tried this hard to actually buy you know, me a, a gift and... And I'm going to probably end up becoming, you know, not myself anymore as years go by. Was that he wanted a, a toy gun. And that toy gun that Myron was explaining was called the Johnny 7 OMA. You know, that I'm like, wow, you know, I never thought they had a gun that could shapeshift everything. So I, I thought that was a very important. So it's almost like they, they were, even though they were rivalries, that they now... You know, they got some moment time for themselves to, to chat. And I thought that, that really worked right there, but there could have been more to it. But I, I know it's a fast-paced movie. And it also feels very cartoonish, too. I mean, you could definitely see where it plays out like a live-action cartoon, in a way. On um, certain scenes. Yeah, there was Yarley Smith, um, who, who plays a woman who with uh, the furry coat. He was about to give uh, Howard uh, the Turbo Man action figure because she had the last one, but it turned out to be Booster. So That's his entire uh, search that he had to look for, and no such luck. Um, but yeah, the, the movie gets wacky and silly, and but that's just the point. I understand it could have been what we expected from a Christmas comedy, like maybe there could have been some heartwarming moments that I wanted to see and maybe there should have been um, but I think that'll probably take up much of the running time and I can see why um, uh, Phil Hartman yeah I mean they they had to make the character you know just your typical annoying next-door neighbor but you realize he's, you know he's going around having an affair with Liz you know ready to, to make up for all the problems that he was going with with Howard, like he does, Howard isn't going around spending time with her. That, yeah, Ted is like hanging around his house, you know, just you know making some cookies or you know hanging out all the Christmas lights and you know, recording the the video f uh, during the karate class and just doing all this all this ha handiwork and stuff. He also hangs around with uh, next door neighbors around too doing all the handiwork, so he's like, and it almost looked like, you know, everyone's going to start flirting with him, I mean, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, usually, you know, Phil Harvin is funny, I always love him, and it's just sad that, you know, I wish, you know, he was still with us, because I always love watching him in comedies. Um... Anyway, uh, Brian Levant um, was hired to do the job to direct this movie because he's been known for doing this kind of material with other comedies. So, I mean, Columbus was the one who who wanted to, him to do all that. And figured this was the perfect vision to do so. I know they had trouble you know, trying to get the rights. Uh, I mean, it looked like they did have a lawsuit um, 
by Murray Hill Publishing. Uh, they're about to sue them because they thought the screenplay was very similar to it called Could This Be Christmas? Um, because it basically uh, follows the same idea. I mean, Fox thought you know they were guilty of of taking the idea, but then they were ordered to pay 19 million dollars for the rights. Um, but the next thing you know, uh, a the president of the company named Bob Lurell passed away a, a year later, and then they were receiving all the money, but then. They, uh, the damages alone they had to cost like 1.5 million and they before the entire thing was uh, all settled uh, by 2004 so but yes Fox finally bought the, the screenplay and I think things just got better as it seems I mean I, I know I guess they didn't realize that and yes, there's even a standalone sequel with uh, Larry the Cable Guy that came out in 2014. Because it seems like, you know, Larry the Cable Guy is just, you know, whoring himself out. You know, ever since, you know, he did uh, the Cars films. It's like, yeah. But then again, yeah, like, for example, he wants to have been Two Fairy 2, which happens to be a movie with The Rock, and now it's like he's doing Jingle All the Way. I mean, what's next? He's going to end up doing like all other direct-to-video films of of films that that stars all your popular heroes, like like it could be Stallone or Schwarzenegger or, or even the, or Lundgren for that matter. I mean, even Chan. I mean, seriously, I mean, it's weird. Okay. Um, uh, yes, it has a nice soundtrack, too. I mean, there's even the song by, um, by Brian Sessler, uh, which is, which they use the song, the Jingle Bells. So they use it for the, for the theme song of, uh, of Jingle All the Way. And, um, they have the usual Christmas music that you often hear. But, nevertheless, um, it, it was pretty funny. I mean, it, it you know, I, I love some of the humor they went into it. I love all the wacky moments and all the craziness that it went into. And and the cast, you know, at least they were having fun. And, you know, Schwarzenegger was incredibly likable. So, you know, he has a lot of charm and warmth. That at times you do feel bad for him because he had to be stuck in this chaotic situation. But that's what happens. When you forget. Yeah. So anyway, that's um, Jingle All the Way, and I give the movie um, three and a half stars. I'm Joseph Asabora, and put that cookie down now!